What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are doing something a little different today instead of like a, you know, in office tutorial or something like that. We are at a shoot. Uh, this is a real shoot. So I'm doing a twilight shoot right now. I shot this house three days ago and I've been trying to do a twilight shoot since then. And it's just been raining every single night. So we just went inside, turned on all the lights, made sure all of the, um, everything was ready to go and turned on the water to the pool. There was like a little waterfall and uh, turned on the pool light as well. So. Now we're going to take a couple test shots and get ready to get our twilight photos. I had a feeling you'd come back and save me From all those lonely nights and heartbreaks And I feel misplaced without you Why don't we go back to, why don't we go back to Never wanted to end I shot this house three days ago and I've been trying to do a twilight the last three days and it has been raining every single day. So today was my first opportunity to actually do it. So when you're doing a normal shoot, you have to have all of the lights on and the fans off, but when you're doing a twilight shoot, really, you just want the lights on. It doesn't really matter if the fans are on or not because we want that glow to go outside. So that's what we're doing right now, getting all the lights on to get that glow. So all of the little lamps and everything that you have to turn on during the day aren't super important for this because we really just want these lights, like I said, to shine through and the lamps aren't gonna add a whole lot to that. So we won't really spend, uh, we won't waste the time doing that. We do have to figure out how to turn on the pool light though. Also the pool has a waterfall feature um, that we got to turn on and the homeowner showed me last time how to do it and I'm hoping that I can get it right. So something to note about when you are taking the photo of the pool, there's only one light in this pool and at this time, you know, we're at 7.57 so we got like 12 minutes till sunset. It's not gonna show up until after sunset. It's gonna have to be like, 820 probably something like that to where we'll be able to start to see that there's a glow in the pool um, So I normally start out front first get a few nice shots uh, of that and then I come back around here And as soon as I'm done with the back I go back to the front and just get a couple more just kind of in case shots I think we're all set up for the shoot now So we're just gonna go outside get our few spots that we feel like we're gonna do uh, Do a couple test shots. All right guys, so I got the Canon EOS R with a 16 to 35 millimeter lens on it It's a perfect lens for real estate photography and still a perfect lens for twilight. So uh, We just got everything set up and I want to go over what twilight photos are and how to take them all right, so it might be pretty obvious what a twilight photo is, but a lot of you may not know if you're watching this video. So a twilight photo is literally a photo taken at twilight. You can do it at dusk or dawn, uh, preferably for me, I'm gonna do it in the evening. Um, we got here about 30 minutes before sunset. So we just got in, turned all the lights on, made sure that we were ready to go. I knew that the owners weren't here at this one. So I wanted to make sure that uh, normally I'll have them turn on all the lights for me and it's just kind of show up and take the photos. But here I knew I was gonna have some setup ahead of time. So got here a little early. If you know that the homeowners are gonna do everything for you, you can get there like five, 10 minutes before sunset and you'll be good to go, but not the case this time. So we are going to put everything in manual um, and I will show you guys those settings right as we're ready. But right now we're gonna take a couple test shots and see kind of where we want to be for the photos. I don't feel like waking up without you by my side. I still see your silhouette. Why don't we go back to why don't we go back to your bed? So 
just like when you are doing interior photos and you know your other regular photos you want to make sure that your camera is level so uh, you know you have your little bubble there that shows you when everything is level so just get the legs to line up right there is perfectly level and then I like to take a couple test shots before I get started. Um, right now I have it, the aperture is at f8. I got ISO 100 and the shutter speed is one over four. So that's probably a little too bright. We can back down the shutter a little bit, one over 10, and just take a quick test shot. Looks pretty good. Obviously we'll have uh, quite a bit of editing to do, um, but for this house we're gonna do like four to six photos in, in the end. The goal for tonight is gonna be to get like four to six photos somewhere in there. The realtor wasn't specific about how many she wanted. It was just more or less like get a few shots of the front, get a few shots of the pool, and we'll be good to go. I personally charge um, one price for one photo, and then I do an additional amount for each photo after that. So I charge $125 for the first photo, and then every additional photo is $12. So, you know, again, be $125 if they only want one, but then, you know, it can go up. I just had a shoot last week that they got 16 photos total for a Twilight, so, you know, quite a few. Um, but when we're out here looking for these shots to get, you know, I got I have a few things in mind that I really wanna make sure I get. I want a couple tight shots right of the front door. I want a wide shot showing everything. Uh, with the pool, it has that waterfall feature. I wanna make sure I get a shot of just that and uh, also get, you know, a shot of the whole patio area. So there's a few things I kind of have in mind before we get started, um, but you know, I. You can, you can plan a bunch when you're getting started, but once you're in it, that's really where you're gonna, you know, that's really where you're gonna see the shots. So guys, I keep trying to come up with a few different things to tell you guys while I'm, uh, you know, waiting for this sun to go down a little bit more, which we can't even see the sun right now, so we'll probably just end up replacing this guy anyway, but we still want the real glow from the, from the lights inside, but uh, something else to note, and I actually get this question quite a bit, is do I do bracketed exposures for Twilights or do I do single exposure? Do I use flashes? Um, really, I just keep it super simple. It's one exposure, no flash. Just get the settings right, you know, keep your ISO as low as you can. If it gets real dark out, you know, you can bump up your ISO 800, 1000 or more. Um, but I try to keep it at 100 if possible and just do one shot and then while I'm in my editing, which I'll probably make a part two to this video of all of the editing of these photos, but uh, while you're in editing, you know, get your ambient light correct and then use your brush tool and you can kind of make sure that, um, you know, the walls and the paint look bright while you can also see the inside really well. So I don't think that this house actually has any landscape lighting that I see. Um, definitely something to be aware of because there's a few different types of landscape lighting, but the two main ones are, uh, they come on a timer that, you know, it's powered by the house and there's solar powered ones. Um, and the solar powered ones can honestly kind of screw you sometimes because they will turn on too late. So it's like already really dark outside and then they come on kind of after the timing of it. So you kind of have to be careful, kind of have to be ready for it. But this house, I don't, I don't see any landscape lights. All I see is this one, which is like a motion light uh, that should come on in a little bit. So I just got a notification that Andrew S bought the uh, email template. So appreciate you, man. Thank you. Anybody else that wants it, link down below. I think we're like five minutes away, guys. We're so close. I just took this shot right here. I don't know if you can see this real well on the screen, but I want it like slightly darker than that. See how this window right there, that window is like not super bright yet, but it's close, you can see it. So we're getting there. Um, five more minutes, we'll be good. All right, guys, it is 8, 10, and uh, we're not exactly in a beautiful sunset right now, but the lighting is still good. Um, we'll go ahead and take these shots. I have a whole bunch of sky replacements, as you know, uh, in the bank, so to say. All right, guys, so, it is time, it is 8.10, it is sunset, and uh, I just brought these tripod legs all the way out because I feel like I wanna be a little bit higher, more even with the door, the front door, and uh, also keep those verticals vertical if possible. Uh, obviously, I'll do a little editing in Photoshop as well, Photoshop and Lightroom, um, but you know, the best you can get it in camera, the better. I'm just getting, getting this bubble in the middle right now, getting it level, and uh, yeah, I think we're ready to go. All right, so right now we are at F8 still uh, for aperture, ISO 100, and we're actually at one second for the shutter speed. So when the shutter speed is that long, I like to put it on a timer. So I'll do a 
two second timer just so that my finger is not like rattling it while it's doing that one second shutter because you'll get you'll get vibration and ghosting in the picture so go ahead and it's on autofocus hit it and there we go that's the image on that i think you got a good glow in every single window looks pretty nice um, i'll take a couple more just to just to make sure also to know i'm at like 18 millimeters right now so pretty wide also since the house kind of like is coming out further on this side you want to angle it for one of the shots because this is kind of the main view if you will even though the garage doors are on that side So for this shot, I'm looking at the peak of the house right there, and I wanna make sure that the camera is in line with that, because this is gonna be a little bit of a tighter shot. I'm not gonna get the whole house in it. Make sure everything is level. And then I zoomed in a little bit, so I'm at about 24 millimeters right now. And uh, shot looks pretty nice. I think it's gonna come out real good. You can also, you know, get a little artsy if you want to. Some some realtors love that. Um, you can put the camera pretty much all the way down and use like one of the bushes or something. Something like something like this. Get a good zoom in on it. Get level. Make sure you focus it on the door. And then you can get a shot like that. You know, looks good. You got your plant in the foreground a little bit blurred, but you know, the focus on the door. I kind of want to do one in between the stuff too. Something Something like that, maybe. Get the get the door centered on this one. Still the same settings, by the way, guys. Still aperture f/8, ISO 100, and uh, a one-second shutter. All right, I think we can go ahead and go around back, get a couple pool shots, and then we'll come back to the front. There we go. All right, so this house is a little, um, it's got a lot of really good features going on, uh, but it does feel a little bit tight. You know, with real estate photos, you want everything to feel nice and open. So we'll kind of keep that into consideration when we're shooting this stuff. Um, I really like the shot going this way over the pool so you don't have the table and everything behind it. Um, but I'm sure we'll, we'll grab a shot from every angle, but I'm just kind of envisioning what ones I'm actually gonna use. Pretty much all pools that you go to are gonna have this little chlorine thing in them and uh, you just kind of have to get used to it. I, I pretty much just always Photoshop it out. If it's something that I can take out real easily, I will, but for the most part, I just Photoshop it. Some look like little rubber duckies though, and I usually keep those in. <laughs> All right guys, so as you can tell, I'm pretty low on this one. I like to do real low shots on the pool. Uh, that way I can just, you can see it easier when, you know, once the house, you're backed up pretty far, so it's easy to see the whole house, but uh, for these pool shots, you're up pretty close to them. So to get the front of the pool, uh, you really wanna be pretty low to the ground. So we're gonna have to change our settings a little bit on here because it's a little darker out back. So I'm gonna keep it at one second still, but I'm gonna bump my ISO to 400, I think. 400 looks pretty good. And let's see how this comes out. I mean, I think it's pretty good got a nice glow in the pool everything's nice and lit up you got uh, some shine coming off of the light there from that one second shutter I think it looks pretty good I'm gonna go ahead and get one of these waterfall shots get this tripod as low as it can and get zoomed in on it I think we're gonna go even lower I like that shot, but I think I'm gonna go even lower and take it off of the tripod. 
and just literally rest it on the ground. So I just bumped it just slightly to uh, one and a third of a second for the shutter. It's a little angled, um, but we'll be able to fix that pretty easily in, in post. You can see how smooth that water looks from that little bit of a longer uh, shutter. It looks super nice. We might even crop in a little bit on it. Um, 35 millimeters is all I can do on this for getting in closer. Um, I mean, it looks pretty good. We'll see, we'll see what I think when I'm editing. I don't really love this shot. You see how much just there's so much stuff, you know, the, the two grill, the two grills, you got so many chairs, you got, I mean, I think, I, I think I'll probably just take this photo just to have it in case the realtor's like, did you get a picture of the back of the house? Um, which that's always a good thing to do, guys. <laughs> if you, you know, don't even plan on giving them the photo, but be prepared for them to ask for it. Uh, so just kind of have it ready. I had a, a client months ago where I took a whole bunch of toilet photos for him and there's a couple of pictures that I didn't really like, but and I didn't send them to her. And then she ended up asking if I had those angles, and she was like blown away when I said, "Yeah, I do." <laughs> so it's pretty cool to have that kind of feeling where you're like, "Yep, uh, I made sure I got everything." I have a broken tripod leg. I mean, yeah, I mean it's basically broken. This leg right here uh, goes out further than the other ones. Like it stops there instead of like there. And I broke it like on an ottoman in a house. Just, I don't know why it broke, but it broke. And it's actually been super handy. I suggest everybody break one tripod leg <laughs> uh, because I use that tripod leg all the time to like get the shots balanced. And um, it's surprising like how useful that is, as stupid as that sounds. All right, so it's getting darker. Got our ISO at 640 on this one, shutter speed still at uh, one and a third. Get our autofocus on. As you guys know, I outsource a lot of my editing at this point in the business, but for Twilight photos, I do not. I still like to edit them. I just feel like I've tried a couple times to have an editor do them and I'm just never happy with them. Um, and maybe that's my fault for not like explaining exactly how I want them done, but regardless, they're kind of my favorite photos to have anyway, so might as well might as well edit them myself. So right now, guys, I have that, that shot, waterfall shot, another waterfall, looking over the whole thing, front door, front door, a little out, out a little further. I think those are pretty good. I think I'm gonna grab a shot of this bar over here since it has an outdoor bar. I kind of want to avoid that table right there, so. I think I'm gonna put it pretty wide and make sure I can see the top of the bar and just go to where, so you can see the bar and then like those French doors right there. And I think that's all I want in that angle. You gotta be careful with not making the shutter too long because you'll have the lights just looking uh, like the sun, just a little too crazy. Sometimes it's better to have it a little darker and just brighten it up in uh, Photoshop. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, I think maybe one more shot of this pool, maybe a, a straight on shot over that waterfall. You don't have, I don't have any lights in that, um, in that shot, so they're not gonna be beaming into it. I think it looks pretty good. Like I said, I don't really wanna leave a shot here, even if I don't use it, so I think I'm gonna just grab a couple couple more, grab one from this angle, two second shutter again, looks pretty good. I think I might actually lower this though. Twilight shoots don't really take a whole lot of time, thankfully. But in the summertime, when the days are long and you've been shooting all day, it does kind of suck to have uh, you know, your twilight shoot being at like nine o'clock at night. And then, you know, you got your first shoot at like nine or 10 a.m. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna grab one more right here, maybe. No, I don't like it. Nice. All right, let's go back out front, grab a couple more shots of that. Now that's a little darker, and then we'll be done. 
turn off the lights, lock the house, and we're good. So even though it's like not common to get this side of the house, I kind of feel like I want, I kind of feel like I want a shot from this corner over here because these are nice sconce lights right there. I feel like it might be a good shot. It's just kind of hard because you can't see really the front of the house. You can't see the front door, but we'll give it a shot anyway. I don't like it. I'm not even gonna take it. <laughs> Obviously now it's a whole lot darker than it was before. And um, you can really still get the shot at this point. You know, like I said, I like the nighttime shots versus just twilight shots. And right now, even though we don't have a flash, we can really still get a lot of light on this house with just a slower shutter speed and a high ISO. So I'm gonna crank it up to like 2000 and um, have my shutter is still one second. Let's see how that looks. I'm zoomed into about 26 millimeters or so. I mean, I think that looks pretty good. The only thing that you'll have to really um, take into consideration when you're doing shots at this time is that there's gonna be a lot of blue all over. So um, you'll have to kind of desaturate the walls. You'll have to desaturate the sidewalk. Um, you'll have to kind of change the hue of the grass to a more green. Uh, so there's a few different things that you have to consider when you're going this late, but I still think that they come out really nice. And then you can either keep the sky if it's a nice sky, or you can do a, a sky swap on it. All right, guys, I think that was the last shot of the night. So now I'm gonna go back through the house, turn everything off, make sure everything is locked up. Um, definitely make sure you don't forget those kind of things. It's like, oh, I took the last photo, I'm done. No, you're not done. Make sure you, know, you don't leave the house open for anybody to just walk into. Uh, it's a good way to lose a client. So. That's gonna be it for me on this one, guys. On the next video, I will be showing you how I edit all of these. So like I said, there's probably gonna be four to six final photos. Um, I think I'll probably edit those photos and put them in this video, but then show you how I edit them in the next video. But anyway, that's gonna be it. I will see you guys in the next one.